Fight Fiend Forecast. I'm Joseph, the host of the Fight Fiend Forecast, and I'm here to recap last night's card, UFC Vegas 81. It went down at the Apex, and we went 7 and 11 on our picks, but we weren't too profitable. It was a very tough card for betting, and normally I recap the cards on the next show, which is going to be the early prediction show for UFC 294, but I woke up this morning and felt the need to do a show just on the recap on UFC Vegas 81. The picks weren't too bad, 7 and 11, but like I said, we just weren't able to make profit, so I want to do a recap. I want to go through each and every pick, starting off with the first fight of the night, Ashley Yoder and Emily Ducat. I'll pull up my picks for you guys right now. We went 7 for 11, and I had two underdogs. She had the reach advantage. It was a competitive fight. It was kind of close, but, you know, she obviously wore a lot of damage. She was split open on both eyebrows. Obviously, Emily Ducat got the damage, got the job done. It was unanimous. Two judges had a 29-28. I agree with that, but the 30-27, that's a little bit iffy. And that wasn't a great pick for me, taking Ashley Oder and making her an underdog. She was a huge underdog, and Emily Ducat did not cover her price tag, minus 400. But still not a good pick, taking Ashley Oder. She was away for two years. She was into some reality TV shit like that. Just not a good pick. She went over three on takedowns. Didn't have any control. And Emily Ducat got a takedown. She went one for one on takedowns with three seconds control. But it really was the damage and the pressure that won her that fight. Yeah, not a good read for me taking Ashley Yoder. But, you know, it was a close fight. She was a four to one underdog. And even though I might have caught some incorrect lines, Emily Ducat was still the clear winner. And next up, we had Chris Gutierrez win a unanimous decision 30-27 across the board. The only thing I want to talk about on this one was I gave you a value prop for Chris Gutierrez on my Instagram and on X, which is also Twitter. Don't really know why they changed it to X. That's a terrible name. We're going to call it Twitter. I'm used to calling it Twitter. So on Twitter and Instagram, I posted my value prop. It was Chris Gutierrez KO and it was plus 500. Might have been plus 600. That was a crazy price and it had a lot of value, but couldn't get the job done, man. Just beat him up with the leg kicks. 56 leg strikes. Just at distance, picked him apart. The volume of strikes was incredible for Gutierrez. Hard to believe he couldn't find the KO, though. Really hard to believe. Alatang Hali. I'm doing notes now when I'm doing these fights. Just live notes. And one thing for Alatang Hali, he's powerful and he's tough, but, man, he's inaccurate. Super inaccurate. 39 strikes landed out of 134. There was no way he was winning that fight. Chris Gutierrez was a pretty high-confidence pick, and he was obviously safe to parlay. And next fight, we had Irina Alexeva, another underdog pick for me against Melissa Dixon. I did a Russian shot of Pink Whitney for Irene Alexeva, and she almost got the knockout. She knocked down Melissa Dixon in the first round, and I even bet Irina Alexeva first round knockout and first round submission, and I bet her by finish. <laughs> Unsuccessful on the bets. She got controlled for eight minutes. Melissa Dixon had pretty good BJJ. She was composed, and she's certainly a girl to look out for in the future. Alex Seva, she is not technical. She's so wild. And just looking at my notes here, that's exactly what it was. Wild, power, and explosive for Alex Seva. And for Dixon, she's composed, technical, good BJJ, pretty good cardio, but she is hittable. She got hit, but she showed us durability. She didn't get finished, and she worked her way back into the fight. So I am impressed with Melissa Dixon's performance. And I am ashamed with my Irina Alexeva pick. Sorry, guys. My underdogs are certainly fades of the week right now. And I don't know when I'm going to turn it around because it's really hard to hit underdogs. But look at me. I took two lock of the weeks and they were both underdogs. We're going to talk about that soon. But next next fight was Terrence McKinney. That 22nd KO over Brendan Murad on short notice. You know, this was obviously a mismatch of a fight. Terrence McKinney round one was parlayed for me. I didn't see it going outside around one, the way he fights. Just like Drew Dober, man, it's kill or be killed. Most of the time, he's going to get the kill, especially when he's fighting a guy short notice who really isn't UFC caliber. Pretty easy pick. Some people were taking it by submission, which actually wasn't a bad play either because Brendan was obviously going to come in here and try to strike with Terrence. Terrence, the safest game plan for, for him would have been to take it to the ground, get the submission, but <laughs> that knee right up the middle, clean as clean. And Terrence finished the job. 20 seconds, and he was done. Out of there. Paid. Easy win, Terrence McKinney. But in the future, just be careful betting on Terrence, man. He's kill or be killed. Just be careful. I love Terrence, though. He's so entertaining. 
But, you know, when he fights guys that are high level, just a little sketchy. And next up, we had Tanera Lisboa against Ravenna Oliveira. And Lisboa, she was a high-confidence pick. I thought she was definitely going to win, but it was sketchy. She won a decision. That would have been a sharp play to play her by a decision. Oliveira looked tough. She was durable. She had control. She had some takedowns, but just not enough to beat Lisboa. I thought Lisboa would get that submission. She was very close. I seen some people taking Oliveira by submission first round, you know. It wasn't very close in my opinion. She didn't really even look like she had a chance to win this fight. It was a unanimous decision, 29-28 across the board. She might have won one round there. But Lisboa, you know, pretty easy pick for me taking her there. Oliveira, she's fought some pretty low-level competition. She's very green, but she's 26. She's going to improve. She's tough. You know, interesting to see what she's going to do down the road here. But I'll tell you what, Lisboa, let's be careful on her down the road. Even though she had a submission that was close, um, yeah, she got controlled and she got taken down. She is seasoned and technical, but some of these girls are going to beat her. I'm not overly sold on Lisboa. Luckily, we got the win on that one. And next up, we finished off the prelim strong going three in a row with Darren Elkins. And this might be the last time I take Darren Elkins. He's 39. So many people questioned the pick. They said, oh, solid picks. You're taking Darren Elkins, stuff like that. I had some fun with Buddy in the comments afterwards. He even got me in a Instagram uh, group chat, Cash Cows. So I appreciate that, man. Game respects game. So you obviously see what I'm doing over here. You thought that was a sharp call on Darren Elkins. You also thought my Barboza lock was sharp. So yeah, like I said, game is going to respect game. You also had some good calls as well. And I really respect you asking me to join the group chat on Instagram. I'm certainly going to join. But back to Darren Elkins, man. I told you to cash out. And this was the thing. TJ Brown, he was kind of limping around at the face-offs and at the weigh-ins. I wasn't overly sold on him. I was taking Darren Elkins from the beginning. I said I wasn't going to bet on him. And I should have did a final prediction show for you guys because Darren Elkins was a very high confidence pick. Coming on to the end of the week, due to the injury on TJ Brown that it looked like and yeah, he got taken down, man. Five at eight times. He got controlled for eight minutes. Elkins just dominated this fight, in my opinion. He found the rear naked choke in round three, thankfully, because I bet him by finish. This is another fight that I bet by finish, not by money line. And this is where I'm getting caught. I'm betting fighters to finish and not just to win. So, yeah, I'm really risking it for the biscuit. Luckily, I got the biscuit this time with the dog, Darren Elkins. What a win, man. Don't take anything away from Darren the Damage Elkins. This was a good win, and TJ Brown might be retiring too. I like this is not, this is definitely not like uh, I seen in the comments. They said this is rigged stuff like that. That's bullshit, bullshit. TJ Brown might retire after this. Elkins had a phenomenal performance, underdog, and a lot of people were taking the underdog there too. Don't take anything away from the damage, but next fight just be aware. I might not take him, man. He's 39. He obviously wears a lot of damage. He didn't in this fight, but against Jonathan Pierce, he did. He wore a lot of damage. He's had some injuries in the past as well, but luckily he got this one done. And another thing to mention too, the big guy on one of the sports book, he was all in on Darren Elkins. And uh, my buddy Clint McLean from the Die Hard MMA show, he was also on Elkins and he mentioned that the big guy was on Darren Elkins. So that brought my confidence sky high. And that's when I really put some bets in on Darren Elkins. So yeah, we cashed in. Thanks, Clint McLean. Thanks for letting us know that the big guy at the sports book was going in on Darren Elkins because that really did boost my confidence, not going to lie. And now the main card. This is the first lock of the night, Cameron Simone. I knew it was going the distance. I even had the fucking fight to go the distance parlayed. And then the four pounds, obviously, for Christian Rodriguez played a factor because he was just a little bit stronger with the punches, right? Doing a little bit more damage. His cardio was probably a little bit better. He was having success with the takedowns. He went 3 for 6. Simone went 0 for 5. 3 minutes of control for Rodriguez. Yeah, I'm pissed off. He should definitely move up to 145 where he's not going to have success. He's being a weight bully. This is a bullshit fight. I wish Simone wouldn't have taken the fight. But I knew that Rodriguez was 4 pounds. Overweight, whatever. And I took Simone last minute. I put 50 on him to win. He was an underdog. I was so confident in him and he lost that decision. I'll take it. I'll take my losses. I didn't really need any more bets out there for the Patreon. So I just threw a 50 on Cameron Simone. Not a good call. 
Not a good call. Two judges had a 30-27. I thought that was BS, but it is what it is. He definitely lost the fight, I guess. He got taken down, got controlled. Like I said, the weight miss for Rodriguez definitely played a factor. I'm pissed off. Sorry about the lock, but the second lock of the night, the final lock, Edson Barboza. You know, you can thank me in the comments, whatever. Edson's a real goat, man. What a performance from Edson. We're going to talk about that one here in a minute. But first, we have another first-round knockout to talk about. Michelle Pereira, his striking is next level. Six strikes, and Petrovsky was knocked out. Petrovsky has no striking, like I said, against Gerard Merchardt. Just, you know, split decision win, just not impressed. Not impressed. Obviously, I was going to steer away from Petrovsky. Was not going to take the underdog stab. I feel bad for anybody that had faith in Petrovsky. Because Pereira, he looks phenomenal at 185. And I want to do another shout out to my boy Johnny K. Picks. He was also confident on Pereira. He said Pereira would not get taken down. And he said Pereira would have the better striking. And boy, was he right. Yeah, Johnny, I know. That was that was a little bit easy for us, but he didn't get taken down. He looked pretty sharp. 185 is definitely his weight class. I can't wait to see his next fight and who he's getting matched up with, too. And for Petrosky, man, you know, that was his first loss, and it was a bad loss in the UFC. His striking, like I said, I don't like it. Don't like it whatsoever, so I'm also intrigued to see who Petrosky gets matched up with next. But it's probably going to be a couple months because that was not a good knockout loss. And he definitely needs to improve his striking. And next up on the cards, we had Jonathan Martinez and Adrian Yanez. And this wasn't even like a close fight. It was price 50-50. I predicted Martinez to win this fight. In the comments section, my boy Cucumber even mentioned that the leg kicks were going to play a factor. And that's how he finished the fight. Round two leg kicks. Yanez couldn't stop the leg kicks. If anybody watched a Martinez fight, especially the one against Cub Swanson, they would be aware that Martinez was going to attack the legs of Adrian Yanez. And you look at Yanez's wins. Not that impressive. Randy Costa, Tony Kelly, you know, on the rise into the UFC. The wins aren't even that impressive. He had a split decision win against Davey Grant. Yeah, Davey Grant knocked out Jonathan Martinez, but that was a bit of a robbery. Adrian Yanez had a little bit of a... Lucky win there against Davey Grant when it was a split decision. So I don't believe that Adrian Yanez is like this next level superstar or whatever. Everybody was so high on him. Everybody was taking the underdog stab on Yanez. They were taking him by KO. And he had no answer for those leg kicks. He couldn't even really strike with Martinez. Martinez was on another level. So that was a sharp pick for me taking Martinez. And I also want to mention that Cucumber in the comments called it out. He said the leg kicks could definitely play a factor. I might have even said it on the prediction show. I don't know. But yeah, he was definitely right. I was right on the pick. Both of us had a sharp call on Jonathan Martinez. And all y'all were super high smoking on that Yanez all week. And yeah, I just said Yanez. Apparently that's his name. I'm saying Yanez. I thought it was Yanez. Apparently it's Yanez. Sorry for pronouncing some of these fighters' names wrong. They keep switching their names or how they pronounce their names. Some of these names are difficult to pronounce. I'm trying my best. So if you're going to grease me in the comments about pronouncing these names wrong, I'm just going to delete your comment, bro. I don't got time for that BS. I have the utmost respect for these fighters, but give me a break when it comes to pronouncing names. When they change it from Yanez to Yanez, people are pronouncing it different on every freaking show you listen to. Just give me a break, man. I'm going to pronounce names the way I pronounce them. I'm a little bit friggin' speech impediment or illiterate, whatever you want to say. You can joke around all you want, but if you're going to beef me, I'm probably just going to delete your comment. Don't got time for the BS. I have respect for the fighters. I'm going to try to pronounce their names right, but give me a break, man. It's not easy to pronounce names. And especially Yanez to Yanez. And next up, we have another close fight to talk about. Not interesting, though. This one wasn't interesting. I honestly didn't even watch this whole fight. To be honest with you, I didn't watch the whole thing. I probably ran out for a hoop during this one. It was a close fight. And Jennifer Maya, looking at the stats, probably should have won. Other than the control of time for Arujo, Seven minutes control. And yeah, when I came in and seen the third round, I thought Vivian was definitely winning this one. Cashed in. It was like $3 for her to win a decision. I knew it was going the distance. Would have been a sharp call to take the underdog by a decision. Obviously, this one was going the distance. 
And Jennifer Maya just dropped the bag. Yeah, she's fought some pretty good level of competition. So did Vivian Arujo. Both these girls are getting old. I don't know if these girls are going up to fight higher level competition now in the standings, like higher ranked fighters, or they're going down. They, they literally can go either way. They are both gatekeepers, and they both have a lot of skill. So it's going to be interesting to see what the UFC does with these women. But, you know, I'm not looking to bet these women in the future. And I'm not overly interested in their fights. Not a great cold main event. Let's go on to the next one. And now, let's break down the main event. My lock of the week, Edson Barboza. And yeah, he got dropped in the first round. And he lost 10-8 the first round. But not on Chris Lee's scorecards. Let's talk about that first. Chris Lee, that little scum. He didn't even give it 10-8 for Yusuf. Okay? I had Barboza lock of the week. I should be the most biased guy of them all. Yusuf won that first round, 10-8. They just had a friggin' seminar on 10-8s, and Chris Lee gives it not even 10-8 for Yusuf. He nearly finished Barboza. He dominated the round. How is that not a 10-8? So... Someone needs to look into Chris Lee. Someone needs to friggin' punish Chris Lee. This guy needs to literally be held responsible for these scorecards, man. It's gonna ruin a fight. I know Barboza was gonna win that fight on the judges' scorecards, but that one scorecard, or that one round scored, could completely ruin the fight. So, I don't care if I'm on Barboza's side or not, man. That was a 10-8 round for Yusuf, and Chris Lee's a scum. I hate Chris Lee. And another thing to mention about Chris Lee... Right? I'm on Irina Alexeva. She, Irina won that first round. And Chris Lee gave round one to Dixon. I'm not being biased about this one either. You guys have to agree. Dixon did not win that first round. She almost got finished. Right? She did not win round one. The other two judges had it for Alexeva. Chris Lee had it for Dixon. Chris Lee's a scum. He needs to be punished. He shouldn't be a judge. Chris Lee is a piece of shit. So... You guys can go look into it yourself. Chris Lee, you know, this isn't the first time. This is not the first time, and it won't be the last. Someone needs to look into this guy. I, oh, I hate Chris Lee. Obviously, something has to get done about this, man. That is outrageous not to give Yusuf a 10-8. But Barboza, man, he came back strong in the second, third, fourth, fifth round. You know, his durability is phenomenal. His experience is next level. He had the spin and wheel kick in the third round, almost finished Yusuf. And I posted that spin and wheel kick on my Twitter, on my Instagram. I forecasted that. I felt that coming. But, you know, he couldn't get the job done. He couldn't finish it. He ended up uh, maybe going for a submission attempt there, which he should have just ground and pounded him out. He would have had the knockout for us. And I was high on the knockout. It was my lock prop of the week. And this is one that I did not bet Edson Barboza money line. I just bet him knockout. I thought he was definitely getting that KO. I didn't think Yusuf could survive, but he did. It was it was a competitive fight, but Barboza, he clearly showed his experience and that his durability is next level. He survived round one and took over the rest of the fight. That was a very good lock pick. Looking at the scorecards, it was 49-46 to 46 Barboza, 48-46 Barboza, and 48-46 Barboza. So it was a clear unanimous decision win for the lock of the week, Edson Barboza. People that took a money line, got paid, plus money lock of the week. You're welcome. You're welcome. But Cameron Simone, you might be pissed off about that, but it is what it is. Christian Rodriguez, you know, he's another guy that I, 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 don't, I don't like him missing weight, man. You know, I think he's a good fighter. I'm not going to discredit his fighting abilities or anything like that, but you got to make weight. You got to be professional, man. But I do dislike Chris Lee. Chris Lee's a scum, man. What a scum. Not giving uh, Irina Alexeva round one. Not giving Yusuf a 10-8 in round one. I don't know what Chris Lee watches, but he's not watching what we're watching, that's for sure. So I hope everybody enjoyed this uh, UFC Vegas 81 recap. It's the first recap show that I'm doing. Might do another special show just on recaps. It was pretty fun. I enjoyed myself. I hope you guys enjoyed yourself. Don't get mad at me for cussing a little bit and getting mad at Chris Lee, but it is what it is. I have it out for Chris Lee right now. And please smash that like button if you enjoyed the show. And if you haven't yet, suplex the subscribe button if you're new. And I'm going to go record UFC 294 either tonight or tomorrow. I got a little bit more tape study to do, but guess what? I'm going double locks again, looking to go three in a row on lock of the week. 
And I'm not going to do an underdog lock. That's way too sketchy. I think two favorites that I'm pretty confident in are going to cash in. Maybe if you take both favorites, you can get plus money on them, but we'll see. We'll see. I don't even know who I'm locking in yet. Don't even know who I'm locking in. I got some more research to do on UFC 294, but I guarantee you, we're going to get our profit and we're going to win some money. So stay tuned. The Fight Fiend forecast is here to stay. We're going to have some live shows maybe in the future. And we're going to do some more shows just on recaps. Maybe just on some drama, if you guys like drama. But we're going to stick to the prediction shows, early prediction show, post weigh-in face-off show. Make sure to show your support. Comment below. Like the video. Suplex the subscribe button. And we'll see you for UFC 294 in Abu Dhabi. Let's go get it, forecasters. And if you're new, I appreciate it so much. Check out our Discord. We got a Discord that's absolutely free. A friggin' great community going and growing. And we got a king in the Discord chat, Game and Girth. He's a legend. He's a GOAT. You're going to want to keep an eye on Game and Girth and all of his plays. And if you want to join Patreon and make some money with the forecasters, the Platinum Forecasters, $5 a month, exclusive early access to all of our bets. We have a cheat sheet. We have a Platinum Pick sheet as well, which gives our confidence levels, method of victories, but the cheat sheet, the forecast forensic, that has been making forecasters money. And with all the features we're giving the Patreon Platinum Forecasters, including some NHL bets and NFL bets, great value for only $5 a month. We expect to see some new forecasters join this week because we're going to Abu Dhabi and we're going to make some bread.